Today, ladies around the world pay a lot of money just have structures like this. But in her case, she was used and abused even after her death for having this. The case of Sarah Bartman, also known as Hottentot Venus, is a typical case of another form of horrible African slavery experience. So many people do not know about Sarah Bartman, the lady with the largest buttocks or the experience she had in the hands of her slave masters simply because she had a very large buttocks. How she ended up being exhibited as a freak show attraction in London and Paris and what they actually did with her body after her death. These and many more are what we are going to expose in this video. But before we proceed with the video, please, if you haven't subscribed yet and you found value in this video, kindly hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, share your opinion in the comment section below, and a big thank you to all our amazing subscribers. Please, don't forget to share this video with your friends and spread the love. Your support means the world to us. Sarah was born into a family of cattle herders in 1789 at the Gamtus River in the Eastern Cape. Sarah experienced full-time hardship in life. This is because she was orphaned as a teenager with her mother dying when she was just two and her father when she was a teenager. Sarah's mother is a native of the oldest tribe in South Africa known as Khoi tribe. There were two physical features that beautified the women of this tribe at that time. One lighter skin tone and two, well-developed hips. Sarah being a daughter to a Khoikhoi tribe woman also possessed as a heritage from her mother a well-developed large buttocks medically known as stetopedia. This is a state in which a woman accumulates substantial amount of adipose tissue on the buttocks and thighs. Sometimes the tissue extends to outside and front of the thighs. This results in giving the woman a curvaceous figure. Sarah possessing the beautiful look made her a fascinating being to the European colonizers of the early 19th century. The Europeans categorized her as a subhuman out of racial sentiments. This made them unleash the greatest physical exploitation on her. As poor as she was as an orphan, Sarah was working as a domestic worker in Cape Town in the house of a Dutch doctor and staff of Royal Navy named William Dunlop, after he purchased her from an African farmer of Khoikhoi tribe, her previous employer. Ever since Dunlop's purchase, Sarah's predicament multiplied in folds. Dunlop used Sarah as his slave and hot servant in Cape Town for a while before taking her to London. In 1810, Dunlop and his partner, a mixed-race entrepreneur named Hendrik Caesars, had to travel back to London with Sarah and convinced her to sign a contract with them to be used as a freak show attraction. They convinced her that she could make a lot of money exposing her body for entertainment. The unsuspecting Sarah with her timidity agreed and signed the contract written by Dr. Dunlop, not know it was more like a Greek gift. The terms of the contract were false and Sarah Bartman remained a enslaved for the rest of her life. With the contract sealed and in progress, Dunlop and Hendrick organized freak shows across England, Ireland and other cities in the UK, as well as in the Netherlands, while cashing out massively and paying Bartman just a little money for feeding. Sarah was made to appear with very scanty clothing on her body, while the public paid to see and play with her body. She became pawned in the hands of his slave masters. She could take any instruction that appeals to the customers like walked, stood, sat or danced as the case may be, provided the client has made payment. The whites saw her with stupefaction, amazement, disgust and amusement. Both men and women touched and made her a plaything. In fact, she was treated like an animal. In the month of September of the year 1814, Bartman was sold to Rowe, a Parisian animal keeper in Paris, France. This transaction was possible because of the popularity Sarah got in the court trials when some concerned citizens filed a suit against Dr. Dunlop's contract with her. They felt sympathetic of her for her predicaments and filed a lawsuit to stop the exhibitions and exploitation. Unfortunately, they failed because the terms of the contract overruled their complaint and Sarah herself had at one time made a formal statement that she were doing all the exhibitions of her own volition, that it wasn't a mistreatment. 
the statement was questionable and lacks integrity because people were of the opinion that she was coerced to make the statement. Secondly, her poor command of English language was a great limitation to clear communication. However, Bartman continued her performances displaying at the popularly known Palais Royal. She was caged in a show glass with baby rhinoceros, and Rowe gave her instructions on the positions and styles he wanted her to pose. She was made to exhibit some kind of zoological behavior. This gave her some psychological shift, turning her into alcoholic person. It was rumored that she also indulged into prostitution. As a result, she met a famous French scientist and Surgeon General of Napoleon Bonaparte and caretaker of the Menagerie at the National Museum of Natural History. His name was Georges Cuvier. He was also popularly regarded as the founder of French naturalism and comparative founder of anatomy. His interest in Sarah was to use her for a scientific study. Cavier made observations resulting in a statement about her anatomy and movements such as something brusque and capricious about them resembling those of monkeys. Bartman suddenly became a trending gist among the French scientists and formed the subject of scientific paintings in Paris. These paintings would become monuments if the story science-based racial discrimination Caviar in his quest to confirm his theory which states that Africans were scientifically close to animals than they are to humans wanted, inspecting the Bartman's reproductive organ to check the presence of elongated labia. However, Bartman refused him seeing her reproductive organ. These exploitation continued until when she unfortunately gave up the ghost on the 29th of December 1815 in Paris at the age of 26. She died of pneumonia syphilis or alcoholism and also died in poverty. Although she was dead, Carvier went on to dissect her body to continue with his research. In 1817, his dissected body was cast in a plaster and displayed in Paris. In his research work, he established that the blacks are perpetually inferior to the whites. In 1975, the private's brain skeleton and the plaster cast of her body were exposed to the public in Paris. Although, after several complaints, the feminists in 1970s argued that the exhibition was destructive and demeaning to women. In 1974, the remains were finally removed from the public view and France retained ownership until in 1994, when Nelson Mandela became the president of the South Africa. He requested the French government to return Bartman's remains. The French government only agreed and returned her body in the year 2022. On the South Africa Women's Day, her body was buried in Cape Town. After 200 years she died, the former president of S.A. Tharbone Becky declared Sarah's resting place a national heritage site. As a reward for her tortures, humiliation and enslavement, Sarah was declared an iconic symbol for the dark African colonial past. You see, Sarah's enslavement shows how the Europeans abhor the blacks. It is one of the greatest African people's humiliation in history, where the beauty and amazing physical sculpture of a black was ironically given the worst remark due to racial sentiments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe for more exciting videos. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Your support means everything to us. See you in the next video.